The Winter Coat Edit 2022. Nine effortlessly chic outfit ideas. The lookbook. Hello everyone, today I have one very exciting and hopefully really helpful video for you all. My edit of the best winter coats. Which ones I chose and why, the pros and cons, how I style them in my daily life and the looks I tend to avoid. Essentially it is a lookbook of winter coat outfit ideas with all the style tips you need to keep you looking effortlessly chic but also keep you feeling warm while you're doing it. A portion of today's video has very kindly been sponsored by Monica Vinader, a brand that I feel very lucky to be sharing with all of you again. As you've seen, I wear this ring daily, so I'm really excited to share what I've added to go with it. Let's get started. Winter coat number one. My new winter coat from The Curated has just arrived and I am so ridiculously happy with it. I have lusted over their coats for years, so when they got in touch and asked if I would like to choose one, I very happily said yes please. How stunning is this coat? Now the version I chose is called the Classic. Been made from 70% merino wool and 30% cashmere and style is also available in grey, camel, navy and black. The quality, I have to say, is just perfection. It really stands out a mile. From the feel of the fabric to those little touches like the stitching on the pockets, absolutely beautiful. A good style tip actually when choosing the perfect winter coat is to lay out one that you have, one that you really love the fit of already, and just double check the measurements. Doing this led me to the conclusion that I should go two sizes up with the curated coat and order the large, and I am so glad I did. It looks exactly as I wanted it to. It's oversized but I'm not drowning in fabric and I know while it is particularly on trend this season this style is not going to be gone in a flash. It's very much a forever coat. It is of course an investment piece but if this one is within budget I truly believe it lives up to its name. An effortlessly chic absolute classic. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. Winter coat two. Now I should add here, please remember it is my job to have so many different pieces in my own wardrobe. And by no means do I think you need to have nine different coats that I'm sharing with you today. You only need one really. But what I intend to do is give you all the style tips that I reach for when choosing a winter coat to make sure that they really become a forever piece in my or your wardrobe. So the next winter coat that's come back on the rail for the colder season is this full length herringbone coat. Now I had left this one out for autumn because it's much more heavyweight than the others that I have, but now it's definitely starting to get a bit chillier. It works a treat. It's double breasted and made from a soft felted wool blend. Now it is more of a masculine shape with that tailoring, but that's also one of the main reasons that I chose it in the first place. While I do love all these soft tones and textures, sometimes you just want to feel or an occasion dictates a little bit more structure, which this coat is absolutely doing. It's got serious boss vibes, I think. I also really love herringbone in coats and trousers too, actually. I just find it incredibly timeless and it always looks chic and very effortless, no matter what the price tag really. <laughs> Green works particularly well sat against grey, and with the added twist of that deep caramel in the mix, it adds an unexpected but really welcome edge. Coat number three. Now one coat that will always make an appearance in my winter edit would be this navy version with the gold buttons. I chose this one originally because it reminded me so much of the blazer. And knowing how often I reach for that one, I knew a coat version would definitely get its wear. Like the blazer, I sized up to the 40 in this one as I wanted it loose enough to get a big chunky sweater underneath. Something to remember actually when trying pieces on in store, don't forget to consider the reality of how you're going to be styling it. Changing rooms are generally pretty hot and you're not likely to have tons of layers on while you're trying on coats in there, but it is really likely that's exactly how you'll want to style it come winter time. So make sure you give yourself enough room to add those in. When finding the perfect coat, start out by asking yourself what you need it for predominantly. Is it for the commute to work? Work, or everyday wear or perhaps something specifically for nighttime. Then once you've realized what you need it for, collate a little selection in your wardrobe of the pieces you know you mostly wear for those particular occasions. It will quickly become fairly obvious which shades you should have on your radar and which you can probably discount straight away. So that's a simple but really helpful tip that I would highly advise before you shop. 
a sprinkle of gold. A little sprinkle of gold can go a very long way. And it's often the perfect finishing touch to making your overall outfit feel more effortlessly chic. Thanks to Monica Vinader, I have chosen a couple of new pieces to add a little bit of polished sparkle to my winter looks. Firstly, I adored the collaboration that they did with celebrity stylist Kate Young, so much so that I jumped at the chance to add the necklace to basket too. Made from 100% recycled gold vermeil, it has these beautiful little lemon quartz gemstones all the way around. I personally like my jewellery to be subtle and very elegant, but I also wanted something with just a little bit of understated sparkle, especially for the festive period, which I think this is absolutely doing. Just stunning, I love it. I was just looking at their website actually, and they have little studded lemon quartz earrings to match, which I think would look lovely for festive parties. So I think I should add those onto my wish list. Now thinking about the fact that I wear my Monica Vinader ring daily, I then opted for this delicate pair of earrings with a tiny hint of black onyx, just to bring the two together. These are the sort of earrings, a bit like the ring, that I could easily wear daily. They're very much my own personal style, but they're not too obtrusive either. They're just a hint of gold to finish off an outfit perfectly and feel a little bit more polished. And the third item I chose is this beautiful 100% recycled gold vermeil bracelet. Monica Vinader do this snake chain style really, really well throughout their entire collection. It's so subtle, but a really effective hint of gold. Now I did look at the necklace version of this one too, but in the end I opted for the bracelet as that's probably something I would wear daily. It's the perfect way to add a delicate touch of lux to any outfit idea and combined with the ring, earrings and necklace it does make my outfits feel complete. Everything arrives beautifully packaged in a gift box sat inside a ribboned bag so I love that ease of a ready-made gift. So if you fancy spoiling yourself this Christmas or perhaps you're looking for that perfect gift for friends or family any of the Monica Vinader pieces would make a very beautiful and really special present. Actually, why don't I add a little present edit by price point in the description box below? I shall add that below with a link to their collection for you to take a look at at the end of this video. And of course, if you do decide to purchase anything, don't forget to use my discount code too. Coat number four the one where you really want your top to stand out the most. Now when I have outfits like this, a very simple pair of tailored trousers styled with one beautiful intricate blouse, I want to keep that top feeling like the star of the show. But it is quite hard to do with winter when it's cold outside and you just fancy wrapping yourself up in fabric. The trick is to keep the other items you're wearing pretty tonal and ideally darker than the item that you're wanting to highlight. So in this style edit lookbook, I added my long black coat to match with my trousers. Because they're both black, they form a blank canvas as such for my white detailed blouse to really stand out even more. It's a super easy trick to be able to highlight a certain item, or even if you're wanting to draw the eye upwards and away from your bottom portion. Intricate details and a brighter shade is lifting the point of vision upwards to the part that I want to put on show. Now my reason for choosing this coat was that I loved that big draping shape and I didn't have an option in black in my wardrobe. However, I must admit it's now one of my least worn winter coats because of that very reason. I'm just not reaching for black items very much at the moment. So while it is helpful to do my job and have all the different options in all the different shades, I don't think for real life you should feel the need to tick every single box. If you don't wear black very much or you don't think it will work with your own color palette, it's probably not a great idea to spend your pennies on an investment piece in that particular shade. Investment pieces need to have longevity. Play it safe and go with the tones you know you can mix and match with the most. Winter coat five. I can do a winter 2022 coat edit and not include the camel. In contrast, probably my most worn coat out of the whole lot. Now I have had a couple of messages recently asking about the length for petites. And I would say perhaps if you're five foot four or smaller, this one is probably going to leave you feeling a little bit swamped, sadly. It is pretty long. A lovely alternative, however, for petites, and if it's within budget, would be the first coat that I showed you, but in the camel version. The length 
of that one is coming up a good four inches shorter than my camel coat and that's with me choosing it in the large so perhaps that's a good alternative for some. For everyone taller than say that five foot four mark, this camel coat has proved it's worth 10 times over in my outfit ideas. I simply finished with that jumper on my shoulders just to tie in with the blues and add a sprinkle of gold detail via the buttons. Outfit six, a new coat in my wardrobe recently, which you might have seen already in my videos and over on Instagram, would be with this faux suede and faux fur aviator jacket in a crew. I rarely shop in Zara these days, so I'm not really sure why I popped over there. I think I was looking for a pair of shoes. But anyway, I spotted this jacket straight away and I knew I would get a lot of wear out of it. I personally love aviator style jackets and I previously had one in black that you might have seen in old lookbooks of mine, but I seem to have lost that one along the way, perhaps in a house move. So it was an easy pick from a style point of view. With the faux fur, they just have that knack of seamlessly going from day to night without too much fuss. Now going for it in the accru rather than something darker does make it more of a statement coat and I'm not really keen on feeling too glam in my outfits. I prefer my looks to be a little more understated. So I tend to try and counteract that vibe with my styling instead. Pairing it mainly with casual looks for a high-low approach and getting my hair up out of the way to make things feel a bit more refined and elegant. All those subtle points can make a huge difference to how your outfit looks overall and they just bring it back into the realm of your true personal style. Outfit seven. Thinking of elegant and refined, this is the sort of coat I generally reach for in the evening time, heading out to dinner or perhaps for date night. For those out outlooks, I tend to prefer something a little bit more tailored. And while black isn't ideal for me personally in the day, at night it is what I seem to reach for the most. When trying to find your own stylish and effortlessly chic winter coat, I find it really helpful to keep an eye out for those points of difference. Why is this one so much better than say this alternative I found at River Island, which is actually half the price. Firstly, I would compare the fabric. You've got Italian virgin wool to River Island's 100% polyester. A beautifully tailored option to something somewhat fussy. And those all important little details, a subtle but standout faux leather trim that you just catch glimpses of while you move versus that quite big and shiny and honestly quite cheap looking gold button that I think would drive me mad. I would just want to remove that. Don't get me wrong, River Island can be brilliant for certain pieces, but this coat is not something that I would personally choose. So next time you decide to invest in a lovely winter coat, it pays in the end to have a really beady eye on even the most minute of details. Details. Outfit eight. The draping robe coat is a star I love. And yet I realized while making this video that it's not been a coat that's had enough wear from me. While I do love my greys and I wear them a lot, I kind of wish I'd opt for this in the lighter shade of beige and possibly size down too. By its very nature, robe coats are meant to feel like you're wrapping yourself up in a big blanket. But when there's almost too much fabric, one, it can feel pretty heavy, and two, it can look it. With styles like this, I would consider sizing down. Down. Obviously, you still want to make sure that you could fit a chunky knit underneath for winter time, but you don't want to feel so swamped in fabric that you're getting lost in a mass of wool. Had I opted for the lighter tone of beige, it would have negated some of that heaviness visually, and sizing down would of course done that literally. However, what I will say for this particular coat is the quality is really, really beautiful. It's a blend of alpaca and wool, which I think is a really lovely combination once it gets a bit colder. Just be mindful of sizing and remember the super oversized look won't be around forever. So it's worth thinking about what's truly going to last in your own wardrobe. Outfit nine. And finally, in this winter lookbook for 2022, for those moments when you're stood at the side of a cold and windy football pitch, you've got to love a puffer coat. No, they're not the most glamorous style in the world. And no, they do virtually nothing for your shape, but they do keep me very warm and toasty when I'm in a muddy field. This is a great one actually from weekday that I gladly chose in chocolate brown. Not that I really chose it for a chic and stylish coat. It was all about the warmth with this one, but it is a bonus that it goes with most of my clothes toner wise. I really hope first and foremost that today's lookbook has armed you with a whole host of useful style tips for you to find the perfect winter coat for 2022. 
or perhaps even you've discovered a new way to style an old one that you already have in your wardrobe. Don't forget to let me know your favorite coat style in the comments below. We're really interested to hear everyone's favorite. And please do click the link in the description box and take a look at that lovely new collection from Monica Vinader. There's some stunning pieces in there this season. Plus, of course, if you do decide to spoil yourself or perhaps someone else this Christmas, there's that discount code there for you too. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Big hugs, and I shall see you on Sunday.